Hello. Uh, I, I hope uh, you all are having a wonderful evening thus far, enjoying the wine, the beer, the food, uh, and more importantly, most importantly, the company of all your colleagues and friends that are here with us today. Thank you all so very, very much for taking the time to come out this evening to this amazing place. It's nothing like dining amongst the dinosaurs, is there? <laughs> uh, to come out to this amazing place, the Sam Noble Museum, to really to celebrate. Uh, today is a day for celebrations, and we'll get into that in a minute. But before we start celebrating, I also want to thank uh, the team in the office of the Vice President for Research and Partnerships, uh, Michelle, Duis, and your team. Uh, I have to tell you, they, I mean, you can tell, they do an amazing job uh, with all our events, uh, with running everything smoothly, and providing the kind of environment for all of you, for faculty, for students, for staff, that really helps us uh, do our job and thrive as much as we can. So thank you all for uh, um, everything you do every day, and especially for um, what we're doing here this evening. So um, as I said before, today is a day to uh, celebrate. And, and you know what? I will tell you, this is the best day of the year to date for me. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen every day. There's a lot of happiness. There's a lot of stresses. But, you know, celebrating your accomplishments, celebrating the accomplishments of the faculty, the students, and the staff um, is something really unique. And it gives me tremendous pleasure to be able to do this. This is the second year that we do it. Uh, my intention is that we're going to continue doing this for as long as we can and as long as we uh, uh, are able to, to do this, to come together um, in, and join together in celebration. And what, are, what is it that we're celebrating uh, today? Um, you know, today we're celebrating incredible success. Uh, you know that President Harris uh, has made uh, the business of knowledge discovery and creativity a core central mission of the university. You know, we aspire to be a top-tier public research university. I will tell you that in many, many, many ways, we are a top-tier public research university. The work that you all do, the work that we're celebrating here today, is proof of that. The discoveries, the creative activities across all the fields uh, that you are carrying out, and the success of your scholarly work in your mission as a creator of new knowledge and a transmitter of new knowledge to our students, is just an absolute remarkable success. Over the last few years, you know, you just have to look at the numbers. I mean, it's, it's what you're doing is truly staggering. The response of the faculty to the challenge that was laid out by the president a few years ago to really take us to the next level uh, has been nothing but spectacular. And so today, we're here together to do that, uh, to, to celebrate our accomplishments. Um, even through the pandemic, you know, we just came out of a really difficult, difficult time. And even through the pandemic, you all came together, you all pursued your goals, your aspirations, uh, you all succeeded in taking the university to that next level. And, you know, at the end of the day, as President Harris has said, we're here to change lives. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to change lives in a positive way. Um, and I maintain, and this is my passion, as you know, that research, creative activity, discovery, empowers us as a society to move forward to the next level all the time, to continue achieving, to continue bettering society. Today, if you look at this university, the impact of our research across the board in communities around Oklahoma, in communities around the nation, in communities around the world, is absolutely remarkable. Uh, we have taken not just a tact to do more, we've taken a tact to grow the impact of what we do. And that's what I am really excited about when I look at the future. Uh, the opportunity is immense uh, for a university like ours that is so well positioned right now. Um, the federal government, the state is incredibly supportive, uh, philanthropists, the corporate sector, there's huge opportunities to really embrace that mission of knowledge, discovery, and creative activity and uh, impact society in positive ways. So again, thank you all of you for what you do every day, your commitment, your passion, your dedication to our students, to teaching them 
what we know and to teaching them the new things that you're discovering and to translating those discoveries into solutions that truly impact our communities around the world in very, very positive ways. So with that, uh, let's get it started because there's a lot to celebrate. And I'm going to bring up to the stage uh, a Senior Associate Vice President uh, for Research and Partnerships Interim, uh, Carol Silva, to recognize our Early Career Awards. Carol? Thank you, Tomas. He's taller than me. <laughs> Everyone is taller than me. It's my privilege tonight to recognize faculty with active early career grants from agencies such as the National Science Foundation, as well as comparable accolades and awards for faculty members early career research and create creative activities. Please hold your applause until all of the awardees have been announced. First, James Howard Hill, Jr., Department of Religious Studies. He is a Crossroads Research Fellow. Joseph Ripberger, Department of Political Science, 2022 Scientific and Technological Activity Commission's Outstanding Early Career Award. GSI, School of Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering, NSF Career Award, an altruistic game theoretic framework to characterize environmental responsiveness of residential electricity consumption. J. McDaniel, School of Electrical and Computing Engineering, an NSF Career Award. UAV-based radar suite for bulk snow characterization and risk management. Paul Moses, School of Electrical and Computer Engineering, another NSF Career Award. Untangling chaotic electromagnetic transient phenomena in power systems mixed with volatile inverter-based renewable energy resources. Sepeda Razavi, School of Chemical, Biological, and Materials Engineering, another NSF Career Award, decoding the dynamics of complex fluids near surfaces and interfaces. Qigong Tang, School of Biomedical Engineering, NSF Career Award, Intelligent Multi-Contrast Imaging Platform for Needle-Based Interventions. Gavin Woodruff, Assistant Professor, Department of Biology, NSF Career Award, the Genetic and Deve Developmental Basis of Body Size Evolution in Nematodes. Tian Tian Yang, School of Civil Engineering and Environmental Science, NSF Career Award. Forecast informed flexible reservoir system modeling enabled by artificial intelligence algorithms using subseasonal to seasonal hydroclimatological forecasts. Yuan Yang, School of Biomedical Engineering, NSF Career Award. Neuronavigation guided non invasive brain stimulation for individualized precision rehabilitation in strokes. Would, would everyone whose name I called please stand? Please join me in congratulating this group of amazing young faculty. Thank you. I'd love. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask Associate Vice President Ann West to join me at the podium to announce our next group of awards. Thank you, Carol. I'm as short as she is, so. <laughs> uh, it is our privilege to recognize the tenured or tenure track OU investigators or teams of investigators that have obtained extramural sponsored research awards of $1 million or more during the past calendar year, we are really pleased to say this is a record number of awards this year. I think we did this in half the time last year. There's 30 total, so please be, be patient. We ask that you hold your applause until all the awardees have been announced. And so the first slide will show, oh, 
Carol, I'm going to hand off to her for the first quarter, and then we're going to go back we're and have forth. We're going to go back and forth yes. and share this. Yes. Our first is a Department of Commerce Build Back Better Regional Challenge Grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration. First is a biotech core facility with the lead PI, John Clear, and the Oklahoma Biotech Startup Programs with the lead PI, Thomas Wavering. The Cobre Award, the Oklahoma Center of Medical Imaging for Translational Cancer Research. The leadership team, Javier Ho, Robert Mannell, Hong Lu, and Kathleen Moore. The Hailstone Project, from the U.S. Department of Defense, Air Force, lead PI, Mark Yeary. The Oklahoma Cobre in Structural Biology, Phase 3, from the National Institutes of Health, lead PI, Ann West. <laughs> Cost-effective conversion of natural gas and biomass to hydrogen and performance carbons, from the National Science Foundation. The lead PI is Stephen Crossley. Improving outcomes in endovascular treatment of intracranial aneurysms, combining additive manufacturing, in silico modeling, and shape memory polymers. National Institutes of Health, lead PI, Chung Hao Lee. OU child care access means parents and school program. <laughs> U.S. Department of Education, lead PI, Kyung Ah Kwan. Anne is going to read the next section, please. Okay. Potentiating a sy systemic anti-tumor response by interstitial localized ablative immunotherapy to synergize with immune checkpoint therapy for metastatic pancreatic tumors. That's a mouthful. National <laughs> Institutes of Health, um, lead PI, Wei Chen. OU Elevate, implementing equitable, multi-context faculty evaluations and workload distributions from the National Science Foundation with lead PI, Lori Snyder. Yay. Integrating socially led co-design into consent-based siting of interim storage facilities from the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, uh, lead PI is Kuika Guptka, Guptka. Novel, electrically small, wideband, time-varying antennas from Boeing Defense and Space Group, lead PI, Jessica Rule. Single-stage surgical intervention for treatment of severe traumatic brain inju injury, National Institutes of Health, lead PI, Michael Dedimore. Deciphering the mechanism of action of carnitine, a novel treatment for chronic Chagas disease, National Institutes of Health, Laura Isabel McCall. The Horus Digital Polarmetric Phased Array Radar, Weather Observations and Further Enhancements, National Oceani Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Lead, B Lead PI Robert Palmer. Intelligent repurposing of hydrocarbon wells system to harness the geothermal potential of Oklahoma sedim sedimentary basin, U.S. Department of Energy, lead PI, Saeed Salhihi. Native American youths enjoy science, yes, Oklahoma, National Institutes of Health, lead PI, Cecil Lewis. Okay, Carol will cover now the third quarter. We're halfway through the million dollar plus awards. Next is the Happy Teacher Wellness Intervention, creating a culture of Head Start staff, well-being, and competence. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, lead PI, Kyung Ah Kwan. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Devices suitable for sectional isolation, WellTech Incorporated, lead PI, Kathleen Teodori. A multi-level mass spectrometry, spectrometry pipeline for the analysis of whole proteoforms and their complexes. National Institutes of Health. Lead PI, Luca Fernelli. Wastewater-based epidemiology to monitor infectious pathogens in the state of Oklahoma. State of Oklahoma, Department of Health. 
Lead PI, Jason Vogel. Shift from unilateral to bilateral sensory motor connectivity in chronic hemiparetic stroke. National Institutes of Health, Lead PI, Yuan Yang. A chemoenzymatic approach to accessing novel isoprenoid scaffolds. National Institutes of Health, Lead PI, Shantari Singh. The effect of medical, Medicaid expansion on mortality disparities and poverty. National Institutes of Health, Lead PI, Joel Mueller. An LCMS guided bioanalytical approach for rational natural product library design and optimization. National Institutes of Health, Lead PI, Laura Isabel McCall. Establishing an integrated soil, land use, weather, climate monitoring network in Peru. Universidad Nacional Agraria La Molina, Lead PI, Bradley Ilston. Anne is going to read the last quarter. Nice job. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Geothermal drilling research of super hot rocks. Phase one, <laughs> Deep Power Incorporated, Saeed Salihi. Career, integrating genomic, paleoclimatic, and morphological approaches to unravel the evolutionary history of fossil and extant marine fishes over time. National Science Foundation, Diana Arcilla. Project Spider, University of North Florida, lead PI, Brittany Hott. Report on homelessness in Oklahoma, Oklahoma Housing Finance Authority, lead PI, Bryce Lowry. Surveillance of pathogens and sewage in Oklahoma City in 2022. City of Oklahoma City, lead PI, Jason Vogel. Classical to quantum transition of self-organization, W.M. Keck Foundation, lead PI, Dorta Bloom. Development of compatibility assessment model for existing pipelines for handling hydrogen containing natural gas. U.S. Department of Transportation, lead PI, Ramadan Ahmed. PIPP, Phase 1, International Center for Avian Influenza Pandemic Prediction and Pre Prevention, National Science Foundation, Shang Meng Xiao is the lead PI. And then we have another PIPP, Phase 1, Next Generation Surveillance Incorporating Public Health, One Health, and data science to detect emerging pathogens of pandemic potential. National Science Foundation lead PI, David Ebert. So we ask if all the lead PIs and co-PIs please stand. There's a lot of you, so please stand. And join us in congratulating this group. Amazing. Half, half the audience. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. That was definitely a record year. So, Okay, so we're going to flip to the next slide. And tonight, we also want to recognize faculty whose years of work and research have resulted in receiving a patent during the last year. And patents are awarded domestically and internationally based on stringent criteria of being truly novel, non-obvious, and useful. These inventions and technological achievements and advancements are not only unique, but represent some of the most far-reaching work being done to impact our world. Tonight, we honor 15 inventors who contributed to the 12 patents received this past year. So again, we, we ask that you hold your applause until all the awardees' names have been announced. Amy Serrato, Roger Harrison, Robert Palmer, Hamid Shabgard, Ri Yang, Boon Liang Chiang, Jeffrey Harwell, Andre Caballeras Panilla, Ben Xiao, Byram Saparov, Lee Fithian, Jay McDaniel, 
Rocky Rajan, Yalti Sigmerson, and Mark Yeary. If you can all stand, please. All right, I'll now ask Carol to return to the podium to announce our next award. Thank you, Anne. We now would like to recognize this year's recipient of the Award for Excellence in Research in Engineering and Applied Science. This award honors exceptional translational research contributions that address major technical, social, and or economic problems in today's society and garner international visibility and recognition. Would Dr. Stephen Crossley please come forward to be recognized? Dr. Crossley joined OU in the fall of 2011 and has distinguished himself as an outstanding researcher in heterogeneous catalysis science and applications. More recently, he has turned his attention to one of the most critical research questions facing the world today, how to produce hydrogen for clean burning energy without adding to greenhouse gas emissions. Dr. Crossley has been instrumental in OU's research activities in this area. He is a key participant in the CHEPS project, or carbon-free H2 production and storage, one of the five ambitious big idea challenge projects at OU. These projects are intended to tackle large, impactful problems that affect our state and nation. He has been a PI or co-PI on grants totaling over $14 million. Please join me in recognizing the 2023 recipient of the Vice President for Research and Partnerships Award for Excellence in Research and Engineering and Applied Science, Dr. Stephen Crossley, Department of Chemical, Biological Materials Engineering in the College of Engineering. Somebody's uh, making sure I'm doing uh, something, the right thing on here. Script. Um, <laughs> <laughs> on script. On script. Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm just going to take a quick pause here in the middle of this just to, again, you know, sort of reflect on what we just heard so far this evening. You know, we have uh, a large group of deans. We have the provost here with us. We have our general counsel. We have a lot of leadership at the university. And I think everybody can see just the extraordinary uh, excellence and success of our faculty. The number of early career awards that you heard about today is unprecedented. Uh, not very many universities the size of ours can boast of a cohort of junior faculty that are as excellent and as outstanding as the ones that we're celebrating here today. And it goes on and on. All these grants, all these awards, there's a lot of hard work that goes into this. It's a team effort across the university I can't tell you how proud I am of everybody. Uh, and we're only halfway there, so <laughs> this is going to be fun. The next award that we're going to present uh, this evening is the Neil Lane Award for Excellence in Research in the Natural Sciences. And you say, who is Neil Lane? Uh, let me spend a little bit, let me tell you a little bit about Neil Lane. Uh, I only, I've known about Neil Lane for decades. Uh, he's sort of legendary. He's an OU alum. He was a physics student here. Uh, but I only had the privilege of meeting him about three years ago, when I first, a little bit over three years ago. Uh, uh, Dean David Robel introduced me to him at a function uh, in physics to celebrate the opening of the Center for Quantum Research and Technology. And I've been completely captivated by Neil Lang ever since. Uh, Neil Lang, uh, aside from being just an incredible individual and a great uh, advisor and mentor, uh, he was you know, more importantly than to any of us, in many ways, he was the science advisor to President Clinton uh, during the Clinton administration. He spent a lot of his years in Washington, um, really at the highest level of the science and technology policy in the nation, and really one of the most remarkable science advisors we ever had in the nation. 
uh, notwithstanding our own uh, Dr. Kelvin Drogemeyer, who also did a great job in the, in the time that he had in the White House. But Neil, as an OU alum, uh, has continued to uh, um, help the university. I know he's of tremendous uh, value to the physics department, to the College of Arts and Sciences. And now also, as a senior advisor in our Strategic Research Advisory Board, he's being instrumental in helping us think through the strategy, think through you know, the implementation of the things that we're trying to do. He really is a wise voice whispering in our ears all the time um, you know, with all the knowledge that he has accumulated over the decades. And he's a greater scientist to go with that. So we thought that, you know, what better than to um, uh, ask Neil, who very humbly at first declined, and then after a while I managed to convince him uh, to lend his name uh, to this award for excellence in the natural sciences. Um, the award recognizes uh, contributions made at the level of importance and impact that garners international visibility and recognition. This year's recipient, uh, Dr. C. Wu, is an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemical Engineering, uh, and really, truly a uh, global superstar, uh, really emerging as one of the strongest scientists globally in the field of mass spectrometry and proteomics and the understanding and quantification of proteins and protein functionality. This is, of course, critical to understanding cellular pathways and human disease. I say that as if I know what I'm talking about. I really don't, <laughs> but this is what Carol told me to say. But kidding aside, <laughs> uh, Dr. Wu is, is truly uh, an outstanding scholar and uh, really recognized internationally. Uh, she, uh, early in her career already, is the editor, not just an associate editor or anything like that, she's the editor of the Journal of Mass Spectrometry and she has been featured in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences as a young scientist and winning the U.S. Human Proteome Organization's Robert J. Coder New Investigator Award in 2020. Please join me in recognizing uh, Dr. C. Wu from the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry in the College of Arts and Sciences. It is now my pleasure to present the award for excellence in research, design, and creative expression in the humanities and fine arts. This year, we have two recipients, Dean Hans Butzer and Dr. Rilla Askew. Dr. Askew is unable to attend, but she is represented by Dr. Roxanne Mountford. Would you both please come forward? This award honors work that offers transformative new directions in humanistic or creative development. As an architect, urban designer, and educator, Dean Hans Butzer's career is centered on the goal of creating meaningful, memorable places designed with and for communities. Among his iconic civic projects is the Oklahoma City National Memorial, for which he collaborated with community members to create a space of contemplation and serenity. Another high-profile project he led is the Skydance Pedestrian Bridge in Oklahoma City. Dean Butzer's dream of designers and engineers won an international design competition for their work on the Skydance Bridge. When he was awarded the Thomas Jefferson Award for Public Architecture in 2016, the American Institute of Architects wrote, the phenomenal transformation that has occurred in Oklahoma City in the early 21st century is a direct result of Butzer's work. Our second recipient is Dr. Rilla Askew. She is a nationally recognized author of novels and essays. From her earliest publications in national journals, she has focused her creative lens on Oklahoma in ways that contradict stereotypes and illuminate lesser known parts of our history. 
U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Harjo observed, Rilla Askew, she is a storyteller of truth and grace in all she writes, whether novel or essay. She moves us to compassionately consider Oklahoma in all of its faces. Askew teaches us to see with wiser eyes. Dr. Askew recently gained further national recognition for her American Book Award winning novel about the 1921 Tulsa race massacre, Fire in Beulah. Writing in a time when the story of the massacre was suppressed and archives were censored, Dr. Askew conducted prodigious research over the course of 11 years to uncover the facts of the assault on Greenwood and the forces that created it. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipients of the VPRP Award for Excellence in Research Design and Creative Expression in the Humanities and Fine Arts, Dr. Rilla Askew, Department of English in the College of Arts and Sciences, and Dean Hans Butzer, Division of Architecture in the College of Architecture. Our next award is the VPRP Award for Excellence in Research in Social Sciences. And I invite this year's recipient, Dr. Joseph Ripberger, to please come forward. <laughs> the award is based on outstanding publications with pioneering research impacts that offer broad societal and community-oriented applications for the common good. Following a postdoctoral position at the National Weather Center, Dr. Rick Ripberger joined the Department of Political Science in 2016. Since then, he has compiled a truly outstanding record in both research and teaching. He has been the PI on over $3.5 million in grants and was a co-PI on another award of $8.75 million he applies a range of big data analytical techniques to study public perceptions of the threats posed by climate change and severe weather, with much of his work focused on behavioral and public policy responses. His work is in use at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection Ag Agency. So please join me in recognizing the 2023 recipient of the VPRP Award for Excellence in Research in the Social Sciences, Dr. Joseph Ripberger, Department of Political Science in the College of Arts and Sciences. invite Tomas to come back to the podium. Okay, okay. thank you, Ang. It's okay, I got it here, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, think I, I think I have it. Um, I think you all know that, um, you know, since uh, we started on this uh, path to grow and, you know, um, excel in research and the impact of research, um, we have been at the university encouraging this idea of trans transdisciplinary convergence. What does that mean? That means ability to come across traditional academic boundaries together across multiple disciplines to tackle grand challenge problems that have a big impact on society. Uh, the only way to do that really is through convergence, is through all of us coming together across the social sciences and the humanities and the STEM disciplines across all of academia uh, to do research work that really excels and impacts uh, communities in ways that are unprecedented. So this year, um, the Award in Excellence in Transdisciplinary Conference and Research recognizes leadership in the creation of collaborative initiatives of teams of tenure and tenure track OU faculty on projects that both demonstrate a deep integration of disciplines towards new configurations of knowledge production, 
and strive towards creating positive and meaningful societal impact. In the next slide, please, uh, this year award goes to the Happy Teacher Project. If you would all please come up here. Please, come up and uh, everybody. <laughs> it's a big team. <laughs> Please wait. Yes, let's let's all uh, uh, gather here, and then we'll. Uh, uh, the team is composed of faculty, staff, and students from across multiple disciplines on all three of the OU campuses, uh, which I think is really wonderful. Uh, it launched a four-year project. Eight, I mean, aimed at improving the physical, psychological, and professional well-being and workplace conditions of early childhood education. Think about how important that is. Right? Especially in a state like Oklahoma, where we truly suffer from you know, a lack of uh, access to excellent early childhood and K-12 education. The project led to a $2.1 million in funding grant to design and implement a holistic and interdisciplinary intervention to promote Head Start staff well-being, competence, and retention. Please join me in recognizing the 2023 recipient of the BPRP Award for Excellence in Transdisciplinary Convergence Research, the Happy Teacher Project, and its team members from the College of Education, Lead PI, Dr. Gyeong A. Kuong. Thank you. Okay. And now I ask uh, Melanie Dickens Ray and Leslie Flanagan to come to the podium to announce the next award. Thank you, Tomas. The Award for Excellence in Research Service and Administration honors a staff member who has made exceptional innovative contributions in support of the research or creative endeavors of o for OU faculty and staff. These impactful contributions have been realized recently or demonstrated through career-long service and dedication. There will be two awards given this evening. This first award is a surprise, so I will leave out the name of the nominator until the end. The following are the nominator's words. I heartily recommend this employee for the Excellence in Research Service and Administration Award. I first became acquainted with this employee in the fall of 2017 as she oversaw several high-profile sponsored research agreement negotiations that required my involvement. As a senior award administrator, she helped me focus on the areas that required specific review and analysis. She provided exceptional oversight and she was the lead for reviewing all the main points in the agreements, sending them to the appropriate departments for review and coordinating between the faculty, sponsor, and the university. From the first few days on, I was particularly impressed with her work ethic and her commitment to each project she took on, took on in her role. She always knew how to spot issues as they arose get to the precise question needed to get an answer, and professionally deliver any message to a sponsor or faculty member as needed. These unique abilities, learned over time, never wavered, which all were impressive qualities about working with her in the Office of Research Services. She has worked for OU for nearly 30 years, with 20 years in the Office of Research Services. In that time, she has negotiated thousands of contracts that have brought in millions of dollars to the institution. Her exper experience and knowledge of the pre- and post-award processing have earned respect from those she works with. While this process is very challenging and involved, she maintains her, her patience and kindness, giving her support and guidance every step of the way. 
She is respected by her peers and those she interacts with, with as they know with certainty that she will represent them throughout the entire process. In her letter of support, Dr. Ann West wrote, for the past 11 years, she has skillfully managed, helped to manage a complex, multi-component center grant with me as PI, and I have been so grateful and honored to work with her. She is a kind-hearted individual, compassionate in her interactions with faculty and colleagues. This is refreshingly reassuring to faculty, many of whom are unaware of the intricacies of pre- and post-award processing. Dr. Scott Wilson wrote, she provides a unique balance of, strong, of a strong technical knowledge of the grant-making process, ensuring that OU as an institution and I as the PI are always in, in compliance, all the while ensuring our ability to fully implement our planned research. She is caring and kind in her communication, patient in her support and guidance, and efficient in communications and documentation. When faced with a challenge or question, she will do everything in her power to provide the necessary guidance and support in finding the best approach to mitigate the challenge. Dr. Paul Spicer wrote, our Center for the Ethics of Indigenous Genomic Research and NHGRI Center of Excellence is a complex award with numerous subcontracts to community partners and new investigators. This is a challenging environment, but she is always patient and kind in these negotiations, prioritizing as needed despite the multiple demands on her time and attention. I cannot say enough about how proud I am to be re represented by her on this project and how grateful I am to have her as a part of our team. In her nominator's words, beyond the scope of research administration, I find her to be engaging, considerate, and excited about her family, friends, and OU athletics. <clears throat> as an avid fan, she always supports the, the Sooners, win or lose. She represents what it means to be Sooner born and Sooner bred. Her supervisor and nominator, Michael Purcell, her supervisor and nominator is Michael Purcell. I am very humbled and proud and a bit emotional to present the award for excellence in research services and administration to Ms. Gail Parker. I thought I was done. <laughs> and now Leslie Flanagan, the Associate Director of Award Administration and the Office of Research Services will present our second award. Hello. As our evening comes to a close, we'd like to take this moment to remember and recognize the life and service of a colleague and dear friend, Susan Renee Cates. Ross, Susan's husband, is here with us tonight also. I first met Susan Cates when I worked in the Rock Mechanics Institute and she worked in CBME. I left Rock Mechanics and went to work for grants and contracts to work in post-award services. Soon after, another position became available and I contacted Susan and said she should apply. Being the two new kids on the block, we formed a friendship to help each other learn the ways of grants and contracts accounting. 
A bit later, I accepted a position in the Office of Research Services, known as ORS, as a Sponsored Programs Coordinator, SPC for short. We like acronyms in our office. <laughs> the SPCs went to Susan for their post-award questions, even the ones that didn't fall under her area. As she got to know the SPCs, we told her that she would need to come to ORS when a position became available. When Susan was able to transfer to ORS as an SPC, it was like our family was complete. Writing this, I thought to myself how interesting how our paths continue to cross over the years. As a matter of fact, her birthday is one day before mine, but she's older than me. <laughs> Many people thought Susan was quiet and shy, but we knew better. She was set. <laughs> She was sassy and a spitfire and didn't put up with much stuff <laughs> and would certainly let you know. When we'd go into Susan's office and we'd see her looking at her phone, we knew that she was stressed because she would look up and say, I'm watching the puppies. It was a website that raised golden retrievers, her favorite dog, to be service dogs. It always made her happy and every so often we'd hear her laugh or she'd say, Come look, and it would be at the current litter of puppies she was following. At work, Susan's commitment to OU was one of an experienced, dedicated, organized, and detail-oriented worker. In her nearly 20-year career in ORS and 35-plus at OU, she led by managing the complexities and actions of research administration with various sponsors. Most of her projects require a significant amount of review and negotiation and working closely with other offices within the university. Her willingness to take on these projects was a great help to the support ORS operations. She was also great at teaching and educating others and explaining why things were done certain ways. I'm sure Fran Stevens could tell you how Susan liked her routing documents arranged. Susan loved taking on complicated projects, and of course the faculty loved her as well, because she always went above and beyond to assist them. Susan was very much a take charge, control person, but one of the things she couldn't control was her health. We've been by Susan's side, supporting her through her health journey. Susan did everything she could not to let her health stop her. Susan and Ross were part of a kidney donor swap at Integris Medical. Ross donated a kidney, and in turn, the brother of the recipient of Ross's kidney donated a kidney to Susan. The SPCs went to Integris to be there with Ross and Susan while filming a commercial and conducting the interview about the, they called it the kidney swap. You can Google it, it's online. <clears throat> As time went on, her transplanted kidney began to fail, but that didn't stop Susan. She came to work every day she could, and as the decline progressed, there were many days that Susan either worked from home or the hospital. Of course, we'd tell her to quit working and rest so she'd come back to work because we missed her. Susan wouldn't let anything get in the way of her work. Unfortunately, her health turned for the worse and received a call that we had lost our colleague and dear friend. We still marvel at what a strong and amazing person Susan was. The loss has been challenging for the SPCs and the ORS family. And a day doesn't go by that we don't miss her. I often hear the SPCs talking fondly about their memories of Susan. Susan made a positive difference in ORS and will be forever missed. Ross, I know Susan was your princess, and she was ours as well. I would also like to add that there will be an annual scholarship in Susan's name for registration and travel to attend the Society of Research Administrators International Meeting S-R-A-I for short. This was a conference that was very important to Susan. Ross, would you please come up so we give you this award in Susan's memory?
And now I would like to ask Tomas to return to the stage to close out this wonderful ceremony. Thank you, Melanie. Um, that was wonderful. Melanie and Leslie, thank you so much uh, for doing this. Uh, what a great celebration uh, we've had tonight uh, across the board, right? From uh, starting with early career awards uh, to celebrating those who help us behind the scenes every day, the staff who make everything that we do possible in the Office of Research Services and across the board, across the entire university. We are a team, we're a family, and as a team and as a family, we're um, excelling and really truly propelling uh, the university, the state of Oklahoma, the nation, and the world, world forward to the next level. So thank you again all very much. I'm not gonna belabor this anymore. Hopefully there is some wine left back there. Uh, you can all uh, mingle and network a little bit. Uh, it's part of the beauty of these events and uh, look forward to seeing everybody here again next year with another set of excellence awards in research and creative activity. Good night and thank you very much. again.